Welcome back. Well, today is International Accounting Day, celebrated on the 10th of November every year. Uh, let's find out what's um, dominating um, conversations uh, this year. Join us for this conversation. We have uh, uh, Dr. James uh, Nemineba, President, Association of National Accountants of Nigeria. And uh, also joining us is Dr. Kaede Fashra, Chief Executive um, Officer, uh, and joining us. Uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Um, happy uh, International Accounting Day to you both. All right, so um, I'll start with you, uh, Dr. Nemi Neba. It's, it's another accounting um, year and it's coming to an end. How are you and your members uh, marking this year's um, International Accounting Day? Well, yes, uh, good morning. Uh, it's going to be the International Accounting Day. It's a day set aside by all accountants, professional accountants, to celebrate the advent and the importance of accounting in the economy and the general spheres of man, humanity, in all activities that involve counting, particularly the debit and the credit and the reporting of accounting activities. It's a day all professional accountants all over the world has agreed November 10th to celebrate this important profession accountancy. They started long ago in California in 1972, where the profession was heavily celebrated. And further, it was adopted by International Federation of Accountants that all accounting, uh, professional accountancy bodies should celebrate the day. And this is what we are doing, in, even in our little way in Nigeria, particularly my professional body, the Association of National Accountants of Nigeria. We're celebrating from the foundation of it on the days of Luca Pasioli when it became um, double entry accounting. Well, Luca Pasioli actually did not found accounting per se, but he introduced the double entry system of accounting. Accounting started with man, the advent of man on earth. You remember that man, on earth who were wanderers in the, in the wild. They pick fruits. They know which ones to con consume and which ones to keep aside. And with a little settled environment, people were put in charge to count seeds, the ones for planting, the ones for consumption. That was the beginning of accounting. So it started with mankind. But it developed into 1494, when Luca Pasioli, with the advent of industrial activities, merchandising, inter-country trade, there was need to keep records. And that record should be in double entry. And we follow, follow the Luca Pasioli double entry system in accounting. And that was how it made popular. And until the adoption of countries, and now we have risen from mere debit and credit to accounting standards that go through the whole world, which we call IFRS. International Financial Accounting Standards, which the whole world practice as one. That is the love of the profession. It's a profession you don't only practice here in Nigeria single-handedly. It goes around the whole world, and everybody key into um, commercial accounting. Uh, we have the one for government, which we call IPSAS, and it has grown. Every day, they are churning out new standards. Today, we talk about integrated accounting. Accounting is not just for profit and loss. The impute of man, the impute of the company, the environment. It went into environmental accounting. Today we're talking about sustainability accounting. And so it is evolving. Accounting is very dynamic and we are proud we are in it. Today is our day. We are proud we are going to celebrate it. Even as we finish from here, we have given order to all our branches all over the country and, and, of course, overseas, where we have our branches to celebrate today, like others are celebrating. Thank you. All right, uh, Dr. Nemineba, I'll definitely also celebrate uh, uh, with you. Well, let me come to Dr. Uh, Fashwa now. Um, every year, uh, this, uh, this uh, day is marked, you know, every year, November 10th, 
Uh, what kind of awareness has it brought to the profession um, at this time? And what would you say are the major issues uh, faced by accountants right now? Thank you very much. Um, um, the, one of the major issues faced by the accountant of today uh, is actually the issue that is being faced uh, with, um, all, by other profession, and that is the issue of um, technology. Um, accounting of um, yesteryears is not what it is today. Today, artificial intelligence has come in. Today, we talk about cloud computing. Today, we talk about a lot of things that um, some people even feel are threats to the accountancy profession, which we don't really believe they are threats, but they are, they are actually coming in to, to make the accounting profession to be actually much more, um, much more effective. Um, artificial intelligence, technology and accounting um, has actually come in to automate um, routine functions which will free um, the accountants to be able to concentrate on much more strategic um, um, activities that the accountant should be able to concentrate on. So, so it is about technology and accounting, and um, accountants worldwide, uh, including our own body, Anand, are actually living, um, living up to the challenge. Uh, we're having to train and retrain our members and to train, retrain and retrain accountants in uh, technology and accounting so that they can be able to live with what the world is uh, all about today. You, 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 you can't say as an accountant, um, you want to run the accounts of an organization that is already fully computerized. When you yourself, you don't have the skills for that. You are really going to be in the background. And so accountants today are skilling themselves, upskilling themselves, to be able to live up to expectations. Apart from AI, um, accountants are really believed to be people that, oh, no, what we do is um, we record transactions and prepare financial reports and so on and so forth. But it really also starts with a major challenge of sourcing for funds because it's the duty of the accountant to know how to also source for funds um, at the least cost because it is this fund that is sourced for, that is being expended, and what is being expended is what is being accounted for. And so the accountant in this era of um, uh, economic downturn worldwide also have the challenge of um, looking for funds to source for at the same time and to keep the, the company um, afloat. And like my president just said earlier, now um, we have a lot of standards coming up today. Sustainability, standard, integrated accounting, and so on. Accountants of today have to keep abreast with this international standard and be able to localize it for their own environment to be able to, I mean, bring about the um, um, economic prosperity for, the, All right. for, for, for your organization and for the All right. economy at large. All right, Dr. Fashwa, let me, let me just take you uh, back now to the um, issue of artificial intelligence. You know, right now, everybody's talking about artificial intelligence. Corruption, everybody intelligence. thinks he's an accountant. Yeah, so uh, corruption cannot take place without the accountant who is the gatekeeper. But corruption is really an endemic thing in the country, and it's, it's something that um, affects everybody it should be a responsibility that everybody should, should take. And so the accountant needs to also deal with that. It's actually a major challenge for the accountant. Right. Uh, so, so much for the um, accountant to, uh, to deal with at this time. But I, I want to take you back to the artificial intelligence you know, conversation at this time. We're seeing a lot of talk about regulation of artificial intelligence and how um, it has benefits, but also it can be an existential threat you know, at this time. Um, how, uh, how, what kind of disruptions is AI bringing to the accounting profession at this time? And is it possible we might not need um, a physical accountant at some point? AI will just do the job. Okay, so um, 
AI um, actually brings threats anyway to, and disruption generally um, to, to, to virtually every activities in the world today. Um, the, the activities that the accountant do, that carry, that carry out uh, in routine form, AI carries it out today. So we have computerized system. Um, there are some functions that accountants need to punch. You, you don't need to, uh, computerized system does all those stuff for you today. Even preparation of account, there are softwares, there are apps that you can use to do all this today. It's a threat. It's a disruption. But we said it is not also a threat to obliterate the function of the accountant because uh, those, those, those AI um, tools cannot also work without the human being that puts them into operation. And so we said they are threat to the accountant who refuses to skill himself or herself and upskills himself or herself. But they will not really be tried to someone who has also skilled himself and upskilled himself in that particular area. It is a challenge to accountant because, um, you know, accountants are also generally conservative. That is the, the, where we're coming from, just that conservativeness not wanting to get out of where we are. But um, we're rising up to the challenges. Because if you don't rise up to that challenge, you're going to be out of job. And so we believe that it is not going to be a major threat to obliterate the function of the physical accountant, the human accountant, but only just to make his work to be much more effective, much more efficient, and be able to free him, that the accountant, the him or her, from the routine functions so that it can concentrate on much more strategic function that will lead much more to the uh, prosperity of the organization. All right, Dr. Fasho, I'm, I'm hoping AI doesn't take my job um, too at some point. But let me come to Dr. Uh, Nemineba now. You know, it's earnings season and most com major companies in Nigeria have reported their financial statements um, for the third quarter. And I understand your association and uh, recently signed an MOU with Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. How do you see auditing standards in a country right now? Yes, before I talk on uh, um, the MOU we signed recently, I want to still talk on the advancement in accounting, particularly in artificial intelligence. No profession is static. The moment you are static, you know you are meant to die. Mm. That is the growth of man. That is the growth of environment. It is the growth of any profession. The day I learned accounting in year one would never be the day accounting is today. It means accounting is, accountancy profession is growing. You know that in those days, in the 80s, you must send, avail yourself in the bank, stand in the queue, take a teller. The days of tellers are gone. You stay in your house and transact your financial business. That is artificial intelligence. The accountant goes to bank and carries a bundle of cash to his office to pay workers. It's gone. A child in school wants to get cash. He simply walks to ATM center and gets cash. Cash was the greatest threat because of smell in the office. And that, all that is aided by artificial intelligence. Talking about a, uh, our MOU, Anam signed AOU with financial reporting councils to strengthen our accountants in practice. We have the, our accountants who are in the public sector and the ones in the private sector. They are practitioners. The practitioners must follow due standards in practice. They are persons who audit both the private sector and the public sector. And they must know which rule to apply. Are you applying IFRS? Are you applying IPSAS? And what are the sustainability accounting that you are bringing to play? And of course, we signed the MOU 
for Financial Reporting Council to give us the authority to go around our practicing firms to ensure they are doing what we taught them in our school, the Nigerian College of Accounting. That is the only way we can bring financial sanity in this country. You see, when you talk of corrupt, corruption is not just a, sometimes there are loose ends if the accountants have their proper data, if what they are giving out is correct to advise government, government will properly address and succeed in the activities they carry on. And by that, you will bring sanity into the financial system. Accountability will follow. Good governance will follow. It's because most accountants do not comply with necessary standards. Not just standards. Ethics is another great thing. And that's why we send people to the college. Give you ethical values. Do you have the value to withstand possible temptation in your place of work? It's not just coming with values from the family. The family values added to values you have learned at your professional level. These are the things you bring. And sometimes you say, no. I will not dampen my professional etiquette. Uh, uh, Dr. So Dr. Neminebo. The Financial Reporting Council. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah, talking about you know, standards you know, at this time, I, I know accountants also uh, can be whistleblowers when you notice some um, unusual activity you know, uh, with funds. Talk to me about how you know, whistleblowing is, go is going in, that, in your profession. Thank you very much, sir. That's what I talked about, ethics. What will prompt you to blow, your, blow the whistle? Whistle blowing was first propagated by Adam in 2011 and 2012. It was Adam, Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, in this country that first came up with the theory of whistle blowing in 2011, 2012. The federal government took it up in 2016. That tells you that we are up into it before even government adopted it. And before an accountant will blow the whistle, he must be ethically guided to know this is, this is wrong, this is good. Where he sees, he sees something going wrong, because he has been taught, he blows the whistle. And oftentimes, the blowing of whistle comes negatively against accountants. But as far as you are an unknown accountant, we have a cushion. We assist you if the whistle blowing, if that whistle you have blown, you inform us properly, the association. We assist you to go through and work with government to ensure we see it, the, the whistle that you've blown to the end. Okay. All right. And ensure Thank that it does not negatively affect the blower. Right. That's the fear of most people. If yeah. I blow the whistle, won't it negatively affect me? Yeah, yeah, it can be, it can be quite uh, scary the, being, being a whistle. The profession has given, has, under, uh, has given the under, under right to assist the blower. Right. All right. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Dr. Uh, Nemi Nebo. Let me come to you now, Dr. Uh, Fasho. I want to get your thoughts, too, on uh, uh, whistleblowing and um, expectations for the signed um, MOU. Okay, thank you. Um, I think the whistle, what, like the president said, um, Anand started actually the theory of uh, whistleblowing as far as 2011. And 2016, the federal government took it up, and it became a whistle-blowing policy that government had. The, the, the downside of that policy, of that whistle-blowing concept in Nigeria, is that it doesn't have a legal backing yet. Um, it, it has gone to the National Assembly probably several times. It has not come out. And um, what has made the whistle-blowing policy, as a matter of fact, uh, that the whistleblowing policy in Nigeria only had strong momentum in its first year. And after that, um, it began to even go down. Like what he said, there are many people who blew whistle at that time. Can you imagine? Uh, there's a story I read of someone who blew whistle in the civil service. And of course, it was known, Federal Ministry of Works at that time. And um, when it was investigated, 
the people that uh, were culprits were actually uh, apprehended. And in the twist of fate, the person that blew the whistle was also um, queried and sanctioned that he has violated the civil service rule of um, secrecy or something like that. So uh, how is he protected? Someone is blowing the whistle, he's not protected. The law does not protect him. And so everybody is afraid of it. But he needs a legal backing. That is the strong thing right. that it needs. Um, about our MOU, just as the president also said earlier, the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria has a, one of its responsibility is to ensure that um, all these standards are, are fully followed, complied with, um, as um, accountants or auditors carry out their functions. So between Anan and ICANN, there are um, accountants who are into public practice. And the Financial Reporting Council has a duty to also supervise them. But you see, the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria does not have that manpower to go across probably about 5,000 audit firm, right. firms. And that is why we, they, they signed that MOU with Anan separately and with ICANN separately, giving us delegate, it's, it's called a delegation agreement, delegating some of those, their duties, their functions to us to be able to carry it out on okay. their behalf. And right. um, it is expected that as this is done, um, it will bring about a stronger uh, audit practice in Nigeria. Right, we're definitely hoping for that. Uh, we, we, uh, sadly, we've run out of time uh, at this time. Thank you so much uh, for your, uh, your thoughts on the show um, this uh, morning. Dr. James Neminebo, President, Association of National Accountants of Nigeria, and Dr. Kaede Fashua, Chief Executive Officer, uh, Association of National Accountants of Nigeria. A uh, happy uh, International Accounting Day to you both again. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, viewers at home. Thank you.